Hey YouTube, it's Monday. Cultural Confederacy here, pipe and coffee in hand, as always, as you know. And I got to talk about YouTube, what's going on with their video flagging. Don't know if you've seen this or not. But watch out for the story, because this is something that's going to affect everybody here on YouTube. YouTube content creators, people who watch YouTube videos. Because one day you may not find your favorite video. Thank you, YouTube, for once again screwing things up. Now, I have to admit, YouTube has been pretty good to me. But we live in a country that believes in free speech. And here's what YouTube is planning to do. They want to shift this video flagging toward NGOs and government agencies. An NGO is a non-government organization. As I said, this is going to be a video in real time, so you might hear some background noise. Which reminds me, if any of your conversations get out on YouTube, don't hold me responsible for it. So this is at the Miami Standard. This is written by the Miami Standard staff. I saw this last night on InfoWars and another website, Reclaim the Net. But, but this is what they're saying here at Miami Standard. Uh, I, I like this, um, this article here. It's, it's brief, so this will be a short video. So starting in May, and I believe this came out either yesterday or the day before. So their article here came out May 1st. But a shout out to Christina Moss, last name M-A-S, at Reform the Net, because I believe she's probably the one who broke the story, if I'm not mistaken. So starting to make YouTube will not allow individuals in its controversial trusted flagger program Instead, focusing, quote, exclusively on key partnerships with a variety of NGOs and government agencies. The Trusted Flagger program began in 2012 as a communal volunteer effort to remove content that violates YouTube's policies. It worked with NGO and government agencies as well as handpicked individuals that were never publicly disclosed. Those participating in the program have access to a variety of tools not available to ordinary users, well, why not? I'm a YouTube content creator. Why aren't these tools available to me? For instance, they can flag multiple videos simultaneously. The reports are prioritized and they get to understand how YouTube makes content removal decisions. Last year, TubeFilter reported that individual flaggers had begun noticing a decline in their experience within the Trusted Flaggers program. Additionally, those who reached Google's Global Director of Information Policy, Government Affairs, and Public Policy, Derek Slater, were reportedly told that the program would no longer be available to individuals. I wonder why. In a statement to TubeFilter, a Google spokesperson said that the company is ditching individual flaggers in favor of its AI content moderation systems and partnerships with groups that study, quote-unquote, misinformation and hate speech. Well, I think we broke the mold there, because on this channel, you can talk about things like the Confederate battle flag, the 2020 election. You can say that you love being an American without shame. And all these agencies, these NGOs, this disinformation czar, who put out this god-awful video doing this Mary Poppins parody, they can take a long walk off a short pier. Walk west of your hat floats, bud. Because this is the greatest country on the planet, and I will do whatever it takes to protect free speech. And if you have to have an agency, an organization, that says they're going to prevent misinformation and hate speech, obviously they have no business being an agency or organization. Do you not get it, YouTube? Those of you who run tube, uh, YouTube? Those of you who run Google? Do you not get that without the First Amendment, or even this disinformation czar, without the First Amendment, there would not be 
misinformation and hate speech because that's the very purpose of the First Amendment, to protect misinformation and hate speech. It's called an exchange of ideas. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to end up like Shostakovich in Russia. And you can take that to the bank, YouTube. You can take that to the bank, Google, Jin Pisaki, this disinformation czar. Call them all you cats out. Now, it's one thing if, let's, um, uh, let's say somebody puts a video here on YouTube that has really inappropriate content. Let's say it's content of a sexual nature. They don't mark that uh, this video is only for a mature audience. Then yes, that video should be taken down. If you're a YouTube content creator, you go through this all the time. Every time you upload a video, you have to confirm whether or not your video is meant for a particular audience. I mean, I tried my best to keep this a family show. Are they going to ban me now because I talk about smoking a corncob pipe and drinking coffee? Is that going to be seen as offensive, as a form of white supremacy? Reminds me of what happened with Opie and Anthony. I've always had my beef about the FCC. So I was trying to find something to talk about here for the channel. I actually posted this video last night, wasn't happy with it, decided to redo it. But I was listening to these different clips of Opie and Anthony. And back in 2002, they had this Sex for Sam contest in New York City. And the premise was that they'd have these couples go out and simulate the deed in these different locations in New York City. Well, one couple got caught at St. Patrick's Cathedral. And rather than just going after this couple, bonehead couple, that wanted to uh, simulate the deed at St. Patrick's Cathedral, they fired Opie and Anthony. That is wrong. Should Opie and Anthony have had this contest? Probably not. Could have done maybe a scavenger hunt. But this is a contest that was being sponsored by Samuel Adams Beer. Then they had the voyeur bus. Like I said, this is a family show. I'm not going to go in uh, to detail about what the voyeur bus was all about. Let's just say this. You had NYPD and FBI agents giving the voyeur bus a thumbs up. So, so now we're going to have machines determining what videos here on YouTube get flagged. That is wrong. That is wrong on so many levels. Ministry of Truth. I'm seeing that being floated around. Georgia Wells, 1984. We truly are living in Alice in Wonderland. So getting back to the article, it says, over the past few years, we've made significant technical improvements to our automated flagging system, BS, and in Q4 of 2021, 92% of videos removed from YouTube were first detected automatically, the spokesperson said. Quote, in an effort to continue improving these systems, we're revamping our trusted flagger program to focus on the expansion of partnerships with specialized organizations. Notice the language here. They just can't come out and say, you know, we want to control what you think what you say, because we want to drive the narrative. This is exactly what happened with Charlottesville. I watched these clips of what happened in Charlottesville. And all you cats in the media stood there like dogs with your tongues hanging out. You didn't do a damn thing to stop it. Not on one of you. Put your cameras down and walked away. What'd you do? You turned around and you blamed the Proud Boys. The Proud Boys, whose leader... Enrique Tario is Cuban-American. But you say that this group here, the Proud Boys, they're white supremacists? No, they are street fighters. They love to street fight. Had you done your homework, you would have known that. But no, you had to, like I said, drive the narrative. Because it was election time, don't you see? We're getting close to the midterms. Or we just had an election, the 2016 election. Charlottesville happened, what, in 2017? So incredible. These people who drive the narrative, who create all the chaos. It's like Rush Limbaugh uh, called them back in the day. 
the drive-by media. I call them the runaway media, because that's what they do. They report the story, they run away, leave all this aftermath. And how many of you people in the media, you people here who run YouTube, who run Google, all these different media sites, how many of you were praising the BLM and Antifa uh, activists who were burning down Seattle, Portland, Atlanta? No, but that's free speech, you see. No, that's called criminal activity. If you want to peaceably protest, which is protected by the First Amendment, then fine, but you don't go and burn down a city. But here you guys were applauding what they were doing. It got so bad that, remember this clip? The CNN reporter who was standing in front of these buildings burning? He said, it's a mostly peaceful protest out here as the building behind him is being burnt to the ground. And people are uh, shouting, you know, fry them like bacon, pigs in a blanket, talking about the police. So when you see all this language in this article or uh, these press releases, these organizations are going to put out these statements saying they're going to do this, this, and this. You know it's bullcrap. Total bullcrap. So once again, in an effort to continue improving these systems, we're revamping our trusted flagger program to focus on the expansion of partnerships with specialized organizations who have deep knowledge in fields like misinformation and hate speech. Can you please define for me what misinformation and hate speech are? which we view as an important component to our systems in the future. YouTube is also working on new features to, quote-unquote, improve the flagging experience for everyone. My behind. After reporting a video, users will receive notifications when the platform takes action. I say bring it on, brother. In the comment sections, there will be more reasons for reporting the comment. Here's an idea. Why don't you come to my channel, those of you who run YouTube, those of you who run Google. YouTube is owned by Google. Those of you at CNN, MSNBC, Jin Psaki, everybody in the White House, this disinformation are come to my channel and explain to me exactly what misinformation and hate speech are. And tell us why you feel the need to have a disinformation czar, this ministry of truth. I will not end up like Shostakovich in Russia, period. And neither should you if you're a YouTube content creator or you just consume YouTube videos. I've got to give a shout out to Nerve Gorilla in his channel. And thank you, Nerve Gorilla, for correcting me on something. I sent him a comment because he had this clip up there of this really crazy loon. I guess the new term is gang stalker. So he's got... This clip of this guy, who's just way out there. I mean, a real psycho. And he's calling people every name in the book, just harassing people. that are minding their own business. He finally gets arrested at the end of the clip. Spoiler alert. So I was trying to put in the timestamp. Told him that we should have, uh, in, in, in that case, you should have some radio code. He was mimicking, uh, getting on a walkie-talkie. Nerve gorilla was. And I said, well, you know, you should have uh, a new radio call called DIP, Dumbass in Progress. So thank you for correcting me on how to put in the actual timestamp because I've seen it done a couple different ways. So I appreciate that. See, something like that I can use. So when I'm writing a comment to somebody, I know to use the proper pronunciation uh, or punctuation, whatever it is. Spelling. So YouTube is going to work on new features to improve the flagging experience for everyone. Uh-huh. We'll just see about that. Here's an idea. Why don't you get back to the First Amendment and protecting that? If somebody's uploading a video that's inappropriate, it's not for a particular audience, then take it down. But misinformation and hate speech? No, that's protected by the First Amendment. 
the exchange of ideas. Time for us to get back to our roots. Enjoyed the video. You know what to do. Thank you for being with me. Culture Confederacy saying peace out. Stay safe, everybody. God bless this great country, and I'll catch you next time.